A warm greeting. Today is Sunday, September 21, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video we will be talking about several systems we are monitoring in the Atlantic. First, we will talk about Gabrielle, which has strengthened into the second hurricane of the season and is forecast to strengthen into a major hurricane as it moves north-northeast in the Atlantic. In addition, we will talk about two tropical waves that we are monitoring in the tropical Atlantic. The first is located near longitude 50 degrees west and maintains a low probability of cyclonic development as it passes just north of the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the Bahamas during the next seven days. And we will also talk about another tropical wave already located near longitude 40 degrees west, and this is the wave that we have been monitoring for several days, for which the probabilities of development have continued increasing during today. Definitely a very different outlook from what we had over the last few weeks, which were extremely quiet in the Atlantic. But just as we had projected for late September and early October, atmospheric conditions will continue becoming increasingly favorable for the development of tropical cyclones. And although at the moment cyclonic activity in the Atlantic has remained below normal, it is possible that during the next seven days we will see the development of Tropical Storm Humberto and Tropical Storm Imelda. First, let's talk about the newly formed Hurricane Gabrielle, which is located near the island of Bermuda, and just as was forecast, it has maintained a track away from the Caribbean region. And if we zoom in on the infrared satellite animation, we can see that this afternoon it acquired enough cyclonic organization to be classified as a Category 1 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. After several days in which Tropical Storm Gabrielle was affected by wind shear and dry air, it is now in a sector where atmospheric conditions are much more favorable for continued strengthening. So much so that the National Hurricane Center is forecasting, it will be a major hurricane by Monday night or Tuesday morning, but fortunately, it should maintain a track east of the island of Bermuda, and eventually continue moving over open waters in the North Atlantic, although in the long term between Thursday and Friday, it may be of interest for the Azores Islands. In fact, in the latest forecast, the National Hurricane Center estimates that the Circulation Center will pass near or over the Azores Islands during the morning hours of Friday, but as a tropical storm. Now let's talk about the tropical waves located in the tropical Atlantic. Let's begin with the one approaching longitude 40 degrees west, which we have been monitoring for several days and which remains largely disorganized thanks to dry and stable air persisting in this zone of the tropical Atlantic. But just as happened with Tropical Storm Gabriel, as it moves west-northwest and when it is located northeast of the Caribbean, it may find favorable conditions for development, and in fact, there is the possibility that this tropical wave may eventually strengthen into a tropical storm and hurricane. And that is why the National Hurricane Center has increased the development probabilities to 60% in about 4-7 to seven days. But notice that the area of possible development of a tropical depression is toward the east and northeast of the Antilles, which is why it does not represent a threat for the Caribbean region. It is very likely that this tropical wave will have a track and intensity very similar to that of Tropical Storm and Hurricane Gabrielle. And in the long term, it is important that Bermuda residents stay attentive to its evolution. And if we look at the global model runs, for example, the European model shows the development of a tropical storm, possibly Tropical Storm Humberto far to the northeast of the Caribbean, without representing a threat for the Lesser Antilles or Puerto Rico. In fact, the ensemble members of the European model coincide with these projections, with none of the members bringing this future cyclone close to the Caribbean region. The German model also develops a tropical storm in about five days, but 400 or 500 miles northeast of the Caribbean, while the European AI model also shows the development of a tropical storm, and although a little closer to the northern Lesser Antilles, it still keeps the center about 200 miles north and northeast of the region, and so does the ensemble of members from the Google AI model. All of them keep that track away from the Caribbean region. And very interestingly, most of the members develop a major hurricane in about six to seven days when it is located south and southeast of Bermuda. In fact, this is why Bermuda must continue to be very attentive to the evolution of this upcoming tropical wave. And now, finally, and of greater interest for the Caribbean and the Bahamas, Let's talk about another tropical wave located closer to the Caribbean, which today was generating strong thunderstorms near the wave axis and actually comes accompanied by a defined circulation. But as the National Hurricane Center indicates, it is not closed at low levels of the atmosphere, which is why for the moment what we have is a strong tropical wave. Now, fortunately, the upper-level jet exiting the circulation of Hurricane Gabrielle is imparting strong wind shear over the tropical wave. And for the moment that is the reason why no tropical cyclone development is anticipated before passing near or over the Northeast Caribbean. And as we can see in this image, in the red and orange colors you can see the wind shear coming out of Hurricane Gabrielle's circulation, and as long as this shear continues impacting the tropical wave, it will not achieve cyclonic development. 
Now, as it moves west-northwest and when it is located north of the Dominican Republic and near the Bahamas, atmospheric conditions will be much more favorable for possibly beginning a process of cyclonic organization. And for example, in about four days, the region north of the Greater Antilles will have below normal wind shear, represented by the blue colors in this image. This will open the opportunity for development of perhaps a tropical depression by the end of this week in some sector of the southwestern Atlantic, even more so as sea surface temperatures will be increasingly warmer as this tropical wave moves over the region, and the combination of these factors may create marginally favorable conditions for the development of a tropical cyclone. And given what can be seen in satellite images and the more favorable medium and long-term conditions, the National Hurricane Center has marked this zone with low probabilities of development. Initially at 2 p.m. it had a 20% chance of cyclonic development during the next seven days, but these probabilities have increased to 30% at 8 p.m. today. In addition, they maintain a 10% chance of development during the next 48 hours, just before it moves near or over the northern Lesser Antilles. However, for Puerto Rico and the northern half of the Lesser Antilles, what is expected is significant rainfall between Tuesday and Thursday. And shortly I will show you the rainfall totals projected by the weather models. However, for the residents of the Bahamas and the eastern United States, it is important to continue paying attention to the evolution and movement of this tropical wave in case it manages to form into a tropical cyclone by the end of this week. At least during this afternoon, the only model that develops a tropical cyclone is the American model, and not until Friday morning or afternoon does it develop a tropical depression or tropical storm near the Bahamas, and in about five to seven days it takes a track parallel to the coast or east of the United States, and in its latest run it brings this system as a tropical storm east of North Carolina. And the ensemble members of the American model, some of them show the development of a tropical storm or hurricane associated with this tropical wave, but notice that there are different scenarios, some tracks quite far to the east, passing far from the United States, and others a bit more westward, approaching the Bahamas and the U.S. East Coast. There is much uncertainty about what its future track could be, and that will depend largely on how much it manages to organize in the coming days since a system that organizes more quickly will probably take a track far from the Bahamas and the United States, while if it remains weaker and manages to move farther west, it could eventually become a threat for the Bahamas and the U.S. East Coast. The European model ensemble, some of its members develop a tropical depression, but for the moment the great majority maintain that track away from the Bahamas and the United States, while the members of the Google AI model also show that track toward the north-northwest. However, the members that keep the system weaker bring it as far west as just north of Cuba and over the central and northern Bahamas. This is why it is important that residents in the Bahamas and the eastern United States stay aware of the evolution of this tropical wave, and for residents of Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles, know that rainy days are expected between Tuesday and Wednesday for the northern half of the Lesser Antilles, with rainfall totals between 2 to 4 inches. Meanwhile, for Puerto Rico it should also rain heavily as well as in the Virgin Islands between Wednesday and Thursday with rainfall totals between 2 to 4 inches. Stay attentive to the evolution of this tropical wave in case any unexpected changes occur, but for the moment the Lesser Antilles Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic should not be alarmed about this tropical wave, since the majority of models develop it only after it passes the region. Even so, be alert to the potential for flooding by midweek. Well, here at Hurricane Info I will continue monitoring the tropics, especially as quite active weeks are expected. Before I leave, I wanted to ask you to give a like to this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. I will continue monitoring the evolution of these disturbances and continue recording videos during the rest of the week. See you later.